What's up crew and it's Lex back with another boxing video. Let's carry on the series that we started a couple of weeks ago. New challenge, new drills, and hopefully something that'll help you just take another step forward from where we went last time. So, last time we did one minute combination rounds with 30 seconds rest. This time we're gonna step up our cardio game. So we're looking at three minute rounds, one minute rest. And each round is gonna focus on something slightly different. So what we're focusing on here is consistent, continual movement, but also energy management. So you wanna be continually moving, but much more of a normal fight pace. So whereas with the one minute rounds, you're really looking to push for that entire minute. On this one, what we're doing is moving consistently when away from the back, just getting that body used to moving all the time, then stepping in, doing your work, getting back out, and then moving again. So we're trying to get a bit more of a realistic situation here in a fight situation, a sparring situation, but also if you're not going to do any of that, just something that's going to help push the cardio level, help raise the cardio ability of your body. So pay attention to each of the rounds, listen to the voiceover that's going to be taken care of by voiceover Lex. <laughs> and what you need to do then is go back and just watch, look at some of the combinations I'm putting together, maybe look at some of the things that I do that um, are overly exaggerated, like you're gonna see a lot of exaggerated movements on rolls and stepping. The reason that you're gonna see this is because my body is not used to this type of movement, it hasn't been used to it for a very long time. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that movement, that motor pathway, the mind to muscle, get it used to doing those movements again. And if I can over exaggerate them, like you can do so on a hook, if you have a bad habit of hooking like this, you can over exaggerate by throwing a really high elbow hook and that'll just help you get in the habit of lifting and rotating round rather than kind of, I think they call it rabbit punching. So on these, what we're looking to do is over exaggerate a little bit and just start getting it in our heads. That movement consistently, not being static and starting to get everything just flowing and moving. Be like water. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, hopefully you join in the challenge, hope it's all going well. Do not be afraid to go pick up the gloves and start hitting that bag. Remember what I said before, if people are busy watching what you're doing in the gym, they are not training properly themselves. So, screw them. Voice over Lex, are you ready? Let's get it on. Let's take it away. Yes, yes, what's up crew? So as we said, going into three minute rounds, one minute rests, we're gonna be doing five of these three minute rounds. So you got 15 minutes working time with movement focus so we're going to be switching from round to round to a different focus all concentrated around body movement and helping you start to get a bit more fluid so round one you're going to use as a building so just looking to keep the shoulders nice and loose body moving changing levels don't worry too much about your punches at this stage just get used to moving around and not being static or on your flat feet that's the worst you can do is just plant your feet and not move. So try and be up on the toes. Don't be crossing your legs as you move from side to side or front to back. You want to be just driving off the toes, staying nice and light, keeping the head moving, shoulders moving. The worst thing you can do is be static overall. So we want to start building those motor pathways, those habits of keeping the body constantly moving. It's going to be a cardio workout. You're probably going to suck it at the first few times. It looks a lot easier than it is. Trust me, I was dying after each one of these rounds, but the minutes rest, you should recover, get your water in, and then be able to move on. So round two, we start getting a little bit more clinical in terms of we're gonna look at one specific thing to look at, and that's lateral movement. So what we're trying to do here is move off the punch. So off the left hook, you can see here, I'm gonna move left. Boom, there it is. And then off the right, I'm gonna come round to the right. So we're just looking for those little movements. You'll see a really exaggerated version of it coming up here in a minute where I really step across. And the reason I'm doing that is to just try and get that movement into my brain, into my body. You'll see it now. And it's just over-exaggerating when you first start. That way, when we dial it in, it'll look a lot cleaner, which you'll see now. This one's a shorter movement, just a little chip slip, bang. So that just brings the back foot around or across. So you're looking to pivot on the front foot when you do move. Again, don't cross your feet and just concentrate on maybe moving off a left hook, moving off a right hook, throwing a jab, maybe rolling under and moving off. These are all just things to just keep thinking while staying on your toes and taking your time. The main thing here is we're doing longer rounds. So you need to conserve your energy, be energy conscious. So we're not looking to throw punches in bunches as often as we do in the minute rounds, but you do want to keep consistently moving. So the third round challenge will be shoulder movement. So here, what I want you to be trying to do is constantly be moving your shoulders around. So you're out of danger zone. You can keep your hands a little bit lower, be moving the shoulders. Then as you step in, you want to bring 
bring the hands up into guard and throw without trying to look like you're going to throw. So we don't want to telegraph the punches as much. So by keeping the shoulders moving and just keeping some angles in there, so you're going to work in the round before, moving laterally, keeping the head moving, level changes as best you can, but mainly just trying to keep the shoulders moving and then throwing punches fluidly from different body positions rather than just kind of being like a wooden soldier and just punching out from the same point each time. So again, we're creating those motor pathways. We're helping the body learn to be a bit more functional, to get it out of that rigidity that it's probably going to be used to, especially if you're just coming from weightlifting. And again, don't get frustrated. You're going to throw bad punches. You're going to throw bad combinations. I'm just showing ones here that looked kind of fluid, but plenty of times I messed up, stepped back, even went through it slowly and then repeated it more quickly straight afterwards. Take your time. As long as you're moving all the time through the three minute round, that's all I want you to do. Concentrating on each factor for each of the rounds. And you can put them in whatever order you like, but I want you to concentrate on a single one for each. So for round four, head movement is going to be the main one. So here we're looking to throw the punches and then get your head out the way or get your head out the way and then throw a punch and you want to use the bag to slip left and right on it's a little hard on this bag because it's so wide but if you are lucky enough to have a narrow bag you want to be pushing the bag towards you and slip your head to the left then to the right throw punches and then maybe move laterally get out the way and then once again throwing jabs getting the head out the way maybe throwing a shot straight after you've got the head out the way just like there throwing up the uppercut off the slip to the right and you can just build these things up in your head take your time repeat the process over and over and of course the head movement doesn't have to be static, it can be during a combination. So here I'll throw a left, slip left and then throw that right over the top. So again, building in, building up combinations, starting to create trigger points in your brain about what comes after what. As well, what you want to look to do on here is practice some other motions. So maybe throwing the jab, slipping right, then throwing the right. Throwing that jab and then getting straight back out of the way. But then keeping the head moving, keeping the body moving to then come back in and strike. So just get used to throwing shots, moving the head, and then repeating. Don't finish on just the head movement or staying static. Here you can see I'm going to throw a jab and get out of the way, and that would build up to then maybe following up with a right. So jab, get out the danger zone, but leave the leading hand forward, and that gives you a counterbalance to be able to strike back with that right hand. So again, it's just building up and getting used to throwing different punches from different areas. So into round five, we're going to concentrate on blocking and counter punching. So that's going to be punching after a block. So we're going to anticipate getting hit and throwing back. So left, block, straight, right. So you can see block left, anticipate getting hit there and then throwing straight right on the return. You can also throw back the same punch on the same side you block. So just have a play. And then we're going to move into striking, blocking mid strike as they would throw counter punches and then finishing off again, striking and moving out of the danger zone. This can then build up into further combinations, including rolls and everything you've done up to this point. So here you're going to see simple one, two, then we're going to roll underneath, back on the attack, anticipate a return after the uppercut and straight. So block, left hook, straight right, then moving back out. Again, just looking to continually bring up that guard, even if you're not striking, just when you're moving around from side to side around the bag. All we want is that movement, consistent movement. If you do get tired, ways of catching your breath are to simply just jog on the spot like you see me doing here, just keeping my torso rotating because I was starting to burn all around my core section and hips. And the other one is to step in towards the bag on the attack as if you're going into a kind of a clinch scenario. Stay in there, just try and lean on the bag, take a bit of the weight, make the body work, but you should be able to breathe. Work a few uppercuts in there, push off the shoulder, uppercut, straight right and away. So you get a little bit of a breather, but you're able to keep moving and that's the whole point. We want to push that cardio. Then going on to some movement drills that you can finish with after the bag. And that's a simple one here is just changing levels, rolling, and I'm using the carpet line here as like a straight line to move up and down. If you have someone holding a stick, um, out in front of you, you can move around and under, that's even better. But here I was just using a mirror in front of me in a straight line, so here you can see me throwing the jab and roll, jab and roll. Again, we're just trying to teach the body to start moving in different ways, because it's not going to be used to it. So we want to start creating that habit. Here throwing just the one, two, roll, very simple, and stepping forward as I'm doing so. So I'm trying to keep my posture, trying to keep that lead leg moving forward, staying on my toes, not being too flat-footed, and again getting the body used to being set in the position it needs to be to fight because I was standing very, very square, which is just a bad habit. So again, I'm trying to get rid of that habit. 
create a new habit, better habit. Here, moving on, just adding in a few things that we've done on the bag, getting the head movement, a few rolls, so you can mix it up as best you want. Again, this is just about moving. I'm doing around about two or three sets of each version here, and I literally get to the end, and walking back is my rest point. So then I just go again, walk back, go again. Again, I just built in here. You can see me doing a jab left hook, and this is building in from just rolling, then throwing the straights, then just throwing the jabs, just slowly building up the combinations to finally finish on that one, two, roll left hook. So that's as easy as it gets, really. You you just kind of build up starting from the simplest movement and add something in on each rotation by the time you're done if you do four or five movements three times on each that's another 15 sets a lot of people have been asking me about shoulder pain and how to ease it one of the best things you can do is one of the simplest and it is literally this it's called a monkey hang find yourself a pull-up bar or anything you can hang on and literally just grip it let your shoulders completely relax and just hang there for as long as you can very 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 good movement because what it does is it helps release all the scapula it helps release all the shoulders and what it does is help reset them back into the position so if you've been compensating in some way this will help disengage the muscle in the joint and help reset them you want to be doing this every single day two or three times a day then moving on to some finishing exercises for this workout. You're going to do some free body weight pull-ups, but you're going to do it with legs straight. You're going to help engage your core. You're going to expose your chest to the bar. So you're going to help keep your chest elevated and you're going to pull through with slightly narrow elbows. So kind of the reverse as you do on a bench press. What you're trying to do here is really help keep the scapula engaged with the shoulders and then pull through from the elbows, really helping concentrate on contracting the lats and pulling through nice and rigidly this is going to really help support all the joints work the back and will also help loosen you up after the bag work dips i wanted to cover as well and again five sets eight to ten reps same with the lats you want to avoid doing this style of dip so here you can see the body's all leaning backwards which puts stress on the shoulder not ideal and a common way most people do it what you do want to do is set up with the feet balanced forward what this does is it helps keep the weight load down through the chest and stops the shoulder having to be a pivot point and a balancing point so you can see from here you're able to go nice and deep and press up and that keeps it all on the chest it's going to feel a little awkward it's going to feel a little kind of unbalanced when you get going but once you dial it in it is a very strong safe and productive movement so give these a go helping keep that weight out in front and massively reducing the shoulder stress the proof is in the fact that for this workout i was literally steaming like a pudding thanks for watching guys don't forget to comment like subscribe let's out. I am back and I'm even better. Whoa!